Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of an Auto Sleeper Carinium RB. So as we start the walk round on the driver side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to is your LPG. So this has got a 25 litre underslung gas tank on it, so it doesn't take bottles. And to fill, you've got your local LPG centre that sells it on the pump. It's a bayonet fit in here, so you get the filler gun, pop it in there, turn it to lock it on, pull the trigger back, and then press the button on the display panel until simply it won't take any more. And then you can see the level that's in here on the dash when the ignition is switched on. So this will go up and tell you how much gas you've got on board at any one time. So to fill this, you'd probably be looking at about 25 pound to fill it from empty. And if you go on the continent with a van, it's far easier to find LPG than it is to find a bottle. So it's quite a handy system to have on. To fill with water, you've got two ways. The most common way with a motorhome is this way. So you put your fitting on, which is the square fitting which goes onto the van. And then the flat end of the hose, you put a hose pipe connector on there and connect it to the tap and you'll need the screw on end because it's just a brass tap on most sides. So that's how you'd fill up if you're going on and off a site or if you're on a super pitch. But if you are well camping or if you didn't want to move the van and you wanted to bring water to the van in a um, collapsible bucket, an aqua roll, a container, you've got this submersible pump here. So you would just connect the same way again. And you hear that pump there kicking in and out. Just pop that pump into the water and suck the water up into the van. So that's the two ways you can fill with water on the vehicle. Or can of course just fill the normal way with the flat end of the hose pipe into there so you can go and buy yourself an ordinary hose if you want put the flat end into there remember to buy the quick release connector and the screw on end because just a brass tap like I've just said and fill with water here and this is your fresh water fill to drain your fresh water off it's a blue tap here so you would take the cover off and empty the water so that's if you've taken on Contam contaminated water if you are draining it down because you simply weren't using it for a while or you are draining it down fully for the winter you want to make sure that this tap is fully drained off along with a grey tap as well which is the water you've used so shower water, dishes water, hand basin water anything that you've drained off via a plug hole you'd simply open on the over the grey waste disposal point on the way out of your site because you wouldn't want to travel with dirty water because it's adding payload, well it's taking payload away, it's adding weight and obviously makes you use more diesel. You'd empty this off on the way out of your site and you'd want to make sure that this is fully drained off again in the winter so no water freezes in the tanks. Two fridge vents. So you've got your max view external TV point. So should you, run a, should you be on a super site, you can use their TV aerial to connect here on the top. So carry some coax wire should you want to do that. And then moving on, you've got your main hooker point. So this is where you hook the vehicle up if you are on a site or if you are charging the batteries at home. So you get your hooker blade, lift the collar, Get the flap on the van, lift the flap, connect, connect to the van first, then the power source and do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live lead. And then when you do come to unhook, if you just press the, the blue clip down, it means unhooking the vehicle's easier and a lot safer. Coming around the back of the van.
you do have rear steadies so you can put the steady handle in there but you shouldn't really need to use these much um it is more for if you're on a way and it was windy you can steady the back of the van out just for but these are more of a caravan design a motorhome kind of holds its weight itself you can wind the leg down should you wish just helps the stability of the vehicle we'll get there eventually <laughs> But then that'll help stabilize the van. But remember to wind them back up before you do start traveling because you can damage them. But that'll help the stability of the van in the wind. So on the back of the vehicle, you do have an ultra box, which is on the bike rack frame. So once you've unlocked it, you can open it and store what you want in here on the bike rack. So your chairs, your, your table, your wind brakes, bits and pieces that you don't want in the van. You've got lead leveling ramps, put it all in here. You've got your high level brake light and your reversing camera. And then as we come on the driver's side, you've got another corner, steady leg here. A 230 external socket so if you want power in your awning pop your plug in there to power your electric barbecue your radio your telly whatever you want out here but you also do have your toilet so this is your toilet system this is your cassette but starting off with your flush which is known as your header tank it opens with the key so So this is your flush so basically what you'll need to do is you'll need to go and get a bottle of pink liquid put a bit of pink liquid in there and then dilute it with some water so either carry a watering can or a collapsible jug or if you're near a hose you can just pop the hose in there and wait until it overflows because it'll dilute that pink liquid into your flush so when you press the flush on the top of the toilet that's what you get it cleans the bowl it gives a fragrant smell so make sure that you've got enough flush in your header tank then underneath, this is where everything ends up in the cassette. So lifting the yellow handle, you'll be able to pull the handle out and pull the cassette out. And you'll be able to carry this to your waste disposal point. When you get there, which is normally beside your toilet block, when you get there, you then take the cap off, press the button and tip it out. Once you've tipped it out, you put some water in because there's normally a tap there. Give it a quick rinse and tip out again. Then you can either put some blue or green chemical down here and take a guess at how much you're putting in. Or sometimes filling this with 120 mil if you want to can be a bit tricky to get it all in without splashing all over yourself. But you can measure 120 mil in the cap or you can just take a guess, put some in there or you can put a pint of water into the cassette push it back into the vehicle and you use the tablets which are in the cellophane format so you just one tablet each time the cassette's changed or 120 milliliter of either the green or the pink the green or the blue sorry but it's up to your sights what they want you to use more sites now want you to use the green as it's more environmentally friendly for them to get rid of but ask when booking your site External gas point, so this uses the LPG tank on board. So if you've got a Kadak, which are great barbecues, you can do various different dishes on there. You can point, put a quick release connector into there. You'll need two Jubilee clips and some orange gas hosing to connect to the Kadak. And then you can turn on and off here to get the gas supply. Storage underneath your seat. Got a bit of storage there, you can get from in and out the van. A 
and you've got storage underneath. So you do have your water connectors there, which one on the other side, we've stored them away for you there. So you've got a pump, your main hose, and a hose pipe end there. So that's the end I was on about. If you put it on the end of the hose, that'll clip on, you'll just need the screw on end. At the passenger door, you've got the diesel, which opens with the main ignition key, so you'd fill your diesel by just lifting the flap forward, and then you've got a lockable cap. You've got your tyre pressures, so five and a half bar, which is 79.5 psi all round. So your weight plate there for your vehicle. Underneath here, so lifting this up, is your tool kit which has got a jackknife brace and a torn eye in this container here and then underneath the floor lifting this cover off you've got your engine battery so if you ever need to change it or put a charger on it just lift the cover off by turning these with a flat headed screwdriver lift the cover off you can put your charger on or change the battery should you ever need to and your bonnet release is there So your fluids are all to the left hand side so the main one you're going to need is your screen wash and then you can lift these four, three covers off the top, lift the cover off the main cover you've got your power steering fluid, your coolant, your brake fluid, your engine oil and dipstick for checking your levels along with your paint code on this sticker here and then you've got your earth for giving or receiving a jump start as the carb engine battery is underneath the floor air filter, headlight, pop your key in the middle on this square box here, lift this up, you've got your positive terminal for giving or receiving a jump start. So to operate your main control panel once you arrive inside the van, so if you're hooked up you'll get this little line here which is an electricity symbol and means you are receiving 230 volt, if not you will just have 12 volt of your leisure battery, so when you turn it on and off should you be hooked up, you'll get mains power. Should you not, you'll just get 12 volt. Next you have your pump. So making sure that you've got enough water. So once it gets a little bit low, so we've got 25% in there, it's telling you that it is low, so it needs to be topped up. And then you've got your lights inside the vehicle which are all then individually switched that is just the main master switch for them and then you do have your own light which is the light on the outside of the van once you put your lights on you've got the dimmer light which is the dimmer in the front lounge you've got your power transfer button here which is this one here but we always recommend that you use the battery L which is a leisure battery which is designed to operate the habitation side. Don't change it and it, if it's showing battery V it's now using the vehicle battery to power all the lights and all the 12 volt in the back of the van which is not really what you want because you could flatten the vehicle battery. So make sure that it's saying battery L, you can view the level, you can view the amperage currently coming off it all through here and then you do have the last one which is your tank heaters. So should it potentially freeze overnight or drop to freezing temperatures more so in the winter or if you're in a colder country put them on and it'll stop the water from freezing in the tanks you do have the up and down so you can view the vehicle leisure fresh and waste water there so you can go up and down you can view your battery vault in your leisure battery and then just goes around in circles to operate your heating in hot water, it's off the Truma CP digital control panel. So you do a long press which turns it completely off and a long press to turn it on. This is the menu, this is standby, it's on, but you want to get into the menu, you'd press enter. And you'll see there you've got a motor home with a thermometer flashing in the top left hand corner. It's off the heating or it's on all the way to 30 degrees. So you can choose your temperature of the thermostat and then press enter. And that'll 
preset the thermostat to 30 degrees, which is this thing here. Then you've got your water. So as long as your boiler is closed and you've got water on board, you can have it on 40 or 60 degrees. And then you've got another setting which is boost, which will turn off the heating to prioritize the water. So for this, we'll just say you want 60 degrees of hot water. Which energy source? You've got a picture of a gas bottle and some electricity symbol. This is what source you want. So whether you're using gas, if you were while camping, because you'd have no other energy source available. Mix one is 750 watts of electric and gas. Mix two is 1500 watts of electric and gas. You'd use this more so in the winter. If you're in desperate need to heat the vehicle or heat the water, use both sources together, which will drastically reduce the time it takes to heat the water or the vehicle. And then you would turn it off and put it back onto electric. So you've got EL1, 750 watts of electric and EL2, which is 1500 watts of electric. So normally if you're on a site, you'd use EL2. But if you're abroad on a smaller CL or on an air, you may have to use electric on one kilowatt, which is 750 watts. So for this, we'll just say mix two because we've got a gas bottle on and we've got electric on. So we may as well use both and drastically take the time it takes to heat the water and the vehicle down to a minimum. So to operate your Fetford fridge, so you turn on and off via this button here. So just press and hold, and you'll be able to turn it on. Press the button to change the source, but you don't really need to change the source. You can leave it on A, which stands for Automatic Energy Selection. So what that will do is it'll pick the best source that the fridge has available. So as you can see, it's got the picture of a plug, because we're hooked up, we've got 230 volt on board. So it's got a hook up, and it knows not to waste the gas, because obviously the gas is on as well with the time. But what you can do is it'll switch between hook up, gas, it'll self ignite, and then it'll go to the battery setting. The battery setting isn't your leisure batteries, it's when your vehicle is running, it gets a feed from the vehicle battery, and it basically only keeps the temperature the same that the fridge was previously set at. So it's got to have been on and been pre chilled beforehand, and then it'll act as a giant cool box on the battery setting until you arrive on your site and either go back to hook up, which it'll do automatically if you're on automatic setting, or gas. But please note that it waits 20 minutes before lighting on gas. So if you want to light it on gas, that's just because if you did pull onto a petrol station and it's lost 12 volt, it can't find 230 volt, but your gas has turned on, it waits 20 minutes before lighting on that source. So what you would do is you'd press and, and light like so. So just put on a manual, get rid of the air, and then you've got your temperature this side. Five being the coldest, so if you are pre-chilling at home on mains electric, put on five the day before, or, two, or should I say two days before, the day, and then once you put your shopping in, the day before you go away, drop it down to about two or th uh, three or four, just so it doesn't freeze the fridge, and then you can put your shopping in, allow it to chill overnight and then when you're ready to travel just start the engine unhook the vehicle and it'll keep the shopper nice and fresh until you arrive on site when you're not using it it's very important that you turn it off and that you leave the door open once you've took everything out that's got to come out obviously you can leave your long life stuff in there and then underneath here there's a little toggle pull that out clip that into there in the top and allow the door to stay open so air can circulate in and out and stop the mold and bacteria from forming in the fridge. So in the kitchen, above the fridge, you do have an extension for worktop. So if you're cooking and preparing food, you can use that. Cutting tree, pressing the travel catch in to unlock the doors. Storage in here, but you do have three gas isolation valves at the bottom So it tells you that when they're on they're across when they're up and down they're off Should you need to turn off an appliance that you think is potentially going to cause an issue you can do it there So you've got oven fridge and your boiler at the bottom Kitchen roll holder on the inside of the door 
You've got switches here, so you've got a USB 12 volt, a TV point, two 230 volt sockets when you're hooked up, and then your microwave on and off switches there, but you've got to be hooked up for that to work, and that is an 800 watt microwave. Glasses and wine bottle holder there, and plate rack in there. It is just screwed down with two screws, so if you do want to remove that, you can get more bits and pieces in that cupboard. As long as your pump's on, you'll be able to get a pressurised flow of water on the hot and cold side. And that's your water on the hot getting warm there. Now, in the kitchen, you've got three gas rings and one electric hot plate. Starting off with the electric hot plate, it's on the far left hand side and it is does need to be hooked up for the electric hot plate to work and that's the red light here which indicates this one is on and that will warm up there you have three lit gas rings once you've turned these off if you allow these to cool so that they're cool enough so you can put the cooker hood down because if it is too warm it can shatter the glass so make sure that they're cool enough to touch you put your grill pan that's your grill lit and then you do have your oven underneath you may want to take your grill pan and oven shelf out when travelling or wrap them up as it can cause a little bit of vibration when on the road. And you do have a bit of storage underneath the oven. It is approached by the wheel arch. The metric cooker hood so you've got lights and you've got a fan speed to retract the smells. Followed by an 800 watt microwave which on and off switches just here, like I've said. Double rate your MaxU satellite dome. All you need to do is turn it on and it'll search. And when the second light becomes solid, it means it's locked on to Astro 2, which is what you want in the UK and France in the start of Spain. Once you start heading down to Spain, Portugal, you will have to change it by just pressing the bottom button there, scan, press and hold, and it'll jump through all four lights until it locks on to one and it'll find the satellite that it needs there. But in this country, you want light 2, which is Astro 2, and then it is, you can connect your telly here. So just making sure that you've got a telly with a built-in satellite receiver like an Avtex telly. You can connect there and as it's got the built-in tuner it will find all your free sat TV channels. And obviously the Avtex tellys are 12 volts so you can use that anywhere you go. Or as well as when you're wild camping you don't have to be hooked up. As long as your leisure battery's got charge you can just connect it to the 12 volt point there. Top rate these type of lights, which is a few throughout the vehicle. They are just a touch light, so there's not a switch for them. Just press in the middle and that'll turn it on and off throughout the vehicle. So underneath the lounge seat behind the driver seat is a location where you'll find your leisure batteries. So first of all, you've got two 20 amp fuses for the leisure batteries. And then lifting this panel, You've got two 105 amp hour leisure batteries. So one full charge leisure battery should last you three days off grid if you use it correctly. So you could get a maximum of six days off grid, but what I would say is you've probably got a maximum of five days off grid should you be while camping. And then you'll be wanting to get onto a site after five days to charge your batteries, empty your toilet, fill with water, but you've got some storage in here as well. So your pipes for your heating, so if you're storing anything on top, it'll get warm in that locker there. So to make the bed, what you've got to do is slide these together, pop your backrests in the middle there, pull these forward, and there you have your double bed at the front, made out of 
your backrests, you can turn your base cushions upside down and then all you need to do is in reverse take them out of the way, slide these in out the way and there you've got your lounge back in the washroom you've got your hand basin here which also is your shower head so just pull this out and pop that onto here and you can have a shower soap dish towel holder and some toiletry racks but making sure that when you winterize the vehicle with this shower head you pull it all the way out and you just take the the head off the shower hose and lie it in the shower tray just and leave the mixer taps open throughout the vehicle to stop any water from sitting in any lines it just stops any water from sitting in that pipe as well because it coils up behind the sink as you can see there that's the hose coiled up you don't want any water sitting in here so if you pull it through and drop it in the shower tray with the head off it will drain any water out but that's toiletry space and to operate your toilet, making sure that the pump's on, you want to press the button, you're going to get some flush. So you want to flush the toilet first, always put a bit of water in the toilet, keeps the seal between the cassette and the top of the toilet lubricated. And then before use you want to open the blade. So to open the blade, it's this grey handle here, so slide it away from you. You can then use the toilet, everything's going to go into the cassette and then you just give it a quick flush after use and then you'd want to shut this to stop any smells or anything coming back through and then when you are ready to empty the cassette it will indicate here by the red light with the person emptying the cassette that it's ready to empty and you can go and take it out outside should you not be able to get the cassette out, it just means that the blade isn't closed properly. But if you do it in the routine like we've said, then your cassette will come out straight away all the time and it shouldn't have any problems because obviously the mechanism isn't engaged. When the blade's open, the mechanism is of course engaged. Fly screen. I'm blackout blind. Press in the middle to depart the two and then you can just press the buttons on the latches and open the window, open it out, it'll stay out, push it all the way out to bring it in and that's how you operate the windows because they've got stays in these metal rods. In the back of the van you do have your island bed so you can lift the bed up and you've got storage underneath so you've got storage carpets and then at the back you've got your boiler so your boiler heats the vehicle and heats the water so in the winter it's very important that you drain the water out because it holds 10 liters of water at any one time this here is known as a frost anti-frost valve so that'll detect the temperature so temperature if the temperature drops below three degrees the water automatically drops out the vehicle when it's not in use because when it is in use obviously this area is warm that valve gets warm with the heating being on and it'll not react to the temperature which is great when you're not when you're using it but when you're not using it you want the water to drain out so what i would do is just physically come and check or do it before when you're packing the van away should the valve not have opened you physically open the valve and to physically open the valve what you need to do is normally when it opens itself this blue button just pops out when you open the valve you turn the diamond on the top the nib pops out and the button pops out like it is now and that'll drain off the 10 litres that's in the boiler you would leave it open in this position when you've got the vehicle stood up in the winter and not in use which is known as winterized when you're ready to then start using it again twist the diamond push the button in at the bottom that's shut the boiler should you be trying to do that and it's cold top tip is put the space heater on without the water heater on for 10 minutes first this area will get warm and then you can shut it and it should stay shut like it is now then what you would do is you would obviously shut the fresh and the waste outside 
and shut all the taps inside the vehicle. Assemble your shower head back up. Fill the vehicle with cold water via a hose pipe from home. And then you'd come in, put the control panel on, put the pump on, go to the cold side of the tap first. You'll get an automatic pressurized cold water feed straight away. Slowly start making your way around to the hot and you'll heat and the water supply will start coughing and splits coughing and spluttering until you get a free flow of water from the hot side of the tap this is when you know that your system is then primed don't be alarmed once it starts doing this it's just filling the boiler from the tank underneath until the boiler gets 10 litres and then it'll push it through the hot side and the hot pipes to the tap that you're using and then check all the other taps until they're all the same and then you system is pressurized and ready to go for the season but remember drain it down because it's not covered under warranty and it's a very costly mistake to make should you leave water in the boiler so now in the cab to the right of the driver is where the handbrake is and then on the driver's door you do have both driver and passenger electric windows followed by your electrically adjustable mirrors so you've got two settings on each mirror one being the top which is the main mirror and one being the bottom being the blind spot which you can adjust all from inside the cab both driver and passenger to black the cab windows out pinch and slide along and that's how you black out the cab windows both driver and passenger and then your windscreen pinch slide pinch slide and you can do the same they're just on a magnetic strip so if it's going to be windy we do advise putting something around there like a hair bubble or elastic band just to stop it from pinging open your gas level indicator here which is on just telling you that you've got two bars obviously that'll which is a quarter of a tank of gas go to your local LPG centre once you take delivery and you can top it right up before your first trip away headlight adjustment and rear fog lights wiper stalk with trip computer on the end so that'll go through your range your distance your average consumption your instant consumption your average speed your traveling times a and b and then if you want to reset it just press and hold for a longer time and it'll completely wipe it and you can start again and send decline a call you can scroll through your contacts your tracks your media and your radio there volume and mute lights and indicators and then on the bottom stalk you've got off turn it to the top setting you've got cruise control the green light comes on in the bottom of the rev count you get your desired speed and push up to set push up to speed up pull down to slow it down cancel it with either hitting the foot brake hitting the end of the stalk and then should you want to resume it to the last speed set before the engine was knocked off you can just press the end of the stalk and that'll set it back away you do have speed limiter as well so it's the bottom setting so turn it all the way at the bottom and it'll come up with sld connected and it'll come up in the top with limb off 20 press and hold it'll go up in fives press and hold and go slowly it'll go up in ones and then to get the limiter on because it's off all you need to do is press the end of the stalk and it'll say limb on and that'll limit you to the speed that was set press to turn it off so that's great if you're going through an average speed camera zone you can turn it on just to make sure that you're not going to get a ticket by going over this is automatic it's a comfortmatic gearbox so a foot on the brake there is no park so neutral is where park is and make sure that you're applying your handbrake all the way down is reverse and then if you go to the left you can go to automatic and you want it want it to say auto one and it'll manually change gear press it 
again and it'll say one and that means it's in manual mode but you can just press there or you can go up and down the gears even in auto just to help it should it be revving too much on the hills or struggling to get up a steep hill you can drop a gear by putting it going up to drop and down to up, up a gear traction control plus so if you're on wet grass you can put that on and it'll help you get out or a gravel hill descent control with it being an automatic it helps you it's like an engine brake when going down a steep hill this is a big glove bin with a auxiliary input at the back both 3.5 milli jack and usb which is lockable by the key this so if you've got any valuables like a sat nav or anything you want to store you might want to lock it in there hazards this locks the doors on an evening including the habitation door just make sure all your other lockers are manually locked and you do have your heated mirrors followed by usb and 12 volt for charging temperature on the outside ring fan speed on the in must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work which is this one here distribution on this outside ring on the right hand side and whether you're recirculating air or bringing fresh air in and then to operate your radio, so radio's FM, AM, DAB, press 1 to 6, press and hold, wait for the beep and it'll save your favourite radio stations. Media is USB or 3.5mm aux jack. And then you can connect your phone as it is Bluetooth, so kick, click phone, click connect the phone click add a phone and you want to find you connect on your phone press pair it'll come up to the pins match press yes and it'll ask you if you want to download your phone book just press allow and it'll download all your contacts into the vehicle so that whoever rings who's saved in your phone will come up with a name and a number and you can scroll through your contacts and make a call when you're on the move glove box glove box which is heated and cooled via the air conditioning so if you've got any little bits and pieces like sweets chocolate small bottles of water you can pop them in there on a longer journey with the aircon on that'll keep it nice and cool and it'll save you from getting up and going to the fridge 